Welcome to Shore Perspectives, a community feature of WESR Radio, highlighting the spirit of the shore from those who call it home. I'm Richard Lewis, and I'm from Parksley. I'm an Eastern Shore boy and um, Flatlander, and I'm a Bayside also. The family business that was started in 1921 by uh, my grandfather, William Lewis, and his partner, James Middleton. Um, and the business was uh, produce, potatoes, vegetables, fertilizers, that kind of thing, until the 40s when the chicken industry came about on the eastern shore. Salisbury, Purdue, um, other companies, Tyson, Holly Farms. Um, so so the, it started in 1921 with my grandfather, Mr. Middleton. So in the late 40s, uh, my father bought his father, Mr. Middleton, out and started uh, Parksley Grain Company and Delmarva Feed Company. And um, at the time, there were no like grain bins. They brought the grain in in trucks and bags, sacks, and would empty it at a location where you had scales. And then my dad, they would put it on box cars. They weren't really grain cars. They were just box cars. And um, they would take it to, to whoever they sold it to. Um, so grain, and there's, you know, the, the, the great thing about Accomack County and Northampton County is that we are such uh, vegetables. You know, strawberries were a big thing one, one time, and, and sweet potatoes, and potatoes, and tomatoes are, are big. So we are a rural area, and we have, the, we have great grain-producing farmers, vegetable-producing farmers, and operations, and so... It opened up a door, a need, there was a need for uh, a grain elevator facility, a central location where grain producing farmers could bring their crops uh, and sell them um, after, after the harvest. Uh, so that, that was the business until about 1950. And then the chicken industry really took off um, with people like Frank Perdue and Don Tyson uh, and others and so dad uh, put up some grain bins in 1963 uh, at our current site uh, in Parksley on, on the Greenbush Road. And, um, and that grew until he had six grain tanks, which was a big operation for a you know, small town. And one of the things, and I don't know if my brother remembers this, but um, one of the things is that I remember when we lived in a certain house in town growing up, dad was always working. In other words, during grain harvest, you know, he might come home for dinner or he might not, but mom would have dinner for my brother and myself. But dad, dad would always be absent. And of course, where's dad? Well, he's at work because it was the fall of the year. My dad used to tell people, well, I got back in the grain business to give my son Richard an opportunity to do something. And he used to make me a little bit angry because he said it so many times, but he was absolutely right. And it, that's exactly what it did. And I, I am a better person for that. In 1980, when I went to work for him, we had uh, six grain bins and like 80,000 bushels of grain space. What just happened in selling the business to Purdue is I sold a business that has 1.5 million bushels of grain space. So we grew the business in the 80s and 90s, and even more recent years. Um, and we grew it because the grain producing farmers of the Eastern Shore are producing more and more. In 1987, I met a man named Don White from Stewart, Florida. Don had a company called White Commercial. And what he did was, he had employees. He went around the country, uh, the USA, and mainly in grain producing states in the Midwest. And he signed up grain elevators to work with him. And the deal was, he would teach us all about grain trading and basis trading in return for us selling our contracts through him. And in 1988, I started doing that. Well, one of the saddest things last week 
was me calling in my last order to the girls down there. And they knew I had sold my business, but I knew that I wouldn't be talking to them on a regular basis anymore that I had done for 40 some years. But Don White was a very strong Christian person whose only purpose, whose only goal was to help someone make them better or help them in a way that they couldn't help themselves. But he has helped so many people and touched so many people that that was his purpose. He doesn't care about stuff and this and that and fancy. He cares about his flip-flops and just helping people in, in, in this world and come to know Jesus and, and, and be a follower. And he's done, uh, he, he's, he's touched so many people. It is important in my life. And I have learned that the more I give, the more I receive. And it's overpowering sometimes. So I have some of the greatest customers uh, at Associated Grain and have been uh, for so many years. And some of my customers are third generation. You know, grandfather, father, and now the person that's a little bit younger than I am. Um, so I'm very appreciative of these great farmers on the Eastern Shore, grain producers, vegetable producers. We have great people. Um, and so what I've done is, just as a little memento, I'm buying watches, watches to give to um, my, my customers. So we're doing that. And it started out just innocently. And then it, it, I had more watches bought than I could ever wear. So I thought, I'll give them as a little thank you for 40 years. I've, next month will be 40 years that I've been doing the same thing. You know, my dad came to me one day and I was uh, putting vinyl sides on a house. And my dad came to me and said, I want to talk to you. Okay, why don't you come to work with me and just see how it goes. If you don't like it, you can come back to this. So that was on June 16th, 1980. So I did. And now we're here at the end of that period of time that turned to be just about 41 years. 41 years. And the Lord has blessed me in so many ways and our family in so many ways to help ourselves and our community and our church and our fire department and employees have, have great employees employees and help them and their family um so as it turned out now i'm talking to you and this is kind of bizarre because i'm remembering th that day when it was like if you don't like it you can always go back to the fact that today we're talking about the ending of it you know so that's kind of got me a little bit emotional this is 2021 are you kidding me 2021 started in 1980 gee many christmas you can't be serious this is where has all this time gone you know you remember when your grandmother would say um tell you how old she was and tell you that as you get older time goes faster and you were a teenager i was a teenager and i think to myself i'd walk away and think 24 hours is 24 hours Time can't go faster. Grandma just didn't know what she's talking about. Wrong. I'm telling you, wrong. Grandma knew what she was talking about. Respect your elders. There's a reason people say respect your elders because it's true. These people have lived longer on planet Earth and they can tell you things that you don't know and we don't know because we can't because we haven't been here long enough. But she was so right, time does go, go fast now. The more you give, the more you receive. And I used to hear that many, many years ago and thought, it makes no sense, just like the time thing with my grandmother. Well, it, trust me, it, it's real, it's real, it's real. And there's a million ways to give. It's not just about financial ways, it's, it's a million ways to give in this world and make the world a better place to live. You know, that's what, and that what we're trying to do is to make this world a better place to live. When January, last January turned around, this company became 100 years old. It started in 1921, and it has ended in, in, in 2021, and so that's 100 years. So if my grandfather and his partner, 
100 years ago or 90 years ago I had been able to think about it, the fact that, well, this, you know, I wonder how long this will last. Well, Billy, he'll, he'll, he'll mess it up or he'll do and then sell it to somebody else. Well, it lasted for 100 years. I'm so grateful to Mr. Middleton, my grandfather and father, you know, and for dad giving me this opportunity. This, the landscape of our world is changing daily and forever changing. And we might not like it, but it's the way it is. So we need to accept the change and, and go on with our lives and, and be thankful. I'm very thankful to the Lord for the blessings, many blessings he has given me and my family. For Shore Perspectives and WESR Radio, I'm Kelly Gaskell.